Hey guys, it's Erin. I'm back today to talk about what I read in the month of December. So first of all, I hope you noticed, um, I got a new camera. Unfortunately, I have had a rough go at learning how to use this camera and previously filmed like three, four other videos. So, you know, they were all out of focus. It was really great. I figured I was not going to put that up on the internet. I could do better. I could demand better of myself. So hopefully this is in focus. <laughs> All right, let's get going. I don't actually have a lot of the books here uh, because I did get a lot from the library in the month of December. So I will put pictures up somewhere of those. And yeah. Um, the first book that I finished in December was Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ning. Um, and I actually, so when I looked back on Goodreads, I had given this a 5 out of 5 stars. And when I was comparing it to the other books that I read in December, I just felt like, like it wasn't a 5 out of 5 star book. <laughs> I'm not saying that it was any way bad. I did really, really like this book in comparison to the other books that I read that month and maybe throughout the year, um, this just wasn't like a all-time favorite of everything. This book follows a family whose daughter, um, at the start of the book commits suicide and, um, this is just kind of like what happens after that and how her family deals with that and moves on with that and responds to, um, the situation that they're put into. Uh, and it kind of fills in backstory and it's more of like just a, a character driven book. Um, not that a lot doesn't happen, but it is a lot of like character focus. The next book I finished was Lost in a Good Book by Jasper Ford. And this is a part of the, um, Thursday Next series. The first one being The Air Affair and I read that last year. Um, these are just like fun books to read. They're not anything like super serious. They're just kind of um nice like pleasant books. <laughs> they're, they're not best of the best or anything. It's just like I said they're really pleasant. They're fun to read. Um there's a lot of really great like literary references in the books and um definitely a good read if you like books in general. Um, the one issue that I had with this more so than Jane Eyre, than The Air Affair was that I read, uh, Jane Eyre before and I, this one was more heavily influenced by, um, Great Expectations and I not read that. So that's definitely on my TBR list. Who knows when I'll actually get to it. But I do, I would like to read that book. It's just, I, I understood it and I feel like I know who Miss Havisham is and everything and I like know the jits of the story. It's just that if you haven't read it, I feel like, you know, it's always nicer to like really know the source material and the canon for it, but what else? Uh, I gave that one, I think a four out of five. It might have been a three out of five. Either way, it was a good book. Um, I like it said, I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. The next book was The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. Um, by Sherman Alexi and this book was just it was really sad in like a semi uplifting way I don't know if that makes me sound like a really horrible human um but you know when books like are sad but they're they're like leave you hopeful that was one of these books this book's about um a kid growing up on a reservation. He's part of a Native American family and just kind of what he has to deal with uh, being living on the reservation and he um, wants to better his life and see himself like actually go somewhere and so he um, actually decides to go to a white school and it's funny in a lot of ways to see the difference between um, how he's treated on the reservation and he's kind of treated like an outsider there and how he's treated at this new school and he's treated like an outsider there. So it's a very hard time like figuring out his identity and kind of like where he fits in. A really interesting book. It's written uh, with like 
illustrations and sketches because he's supposed to be kind of like a, a comic artist. He wants to be a comic artist, so there's all these little comics in there, which is great. Um, but it is incredibly sad. He has a lot of family uh, drama and tragedies happen to him. And I loved that book. Um, I definitely gave that a five out of five star book. Uh, wonderful. And it is a YA, so it's written quite simply, um, and it's easy to follow and easy to read. And the next book I read was Did You Ever Have a Family by Bill Clegg, and this was, um, on the long list at least. I don't remember if it was put on the short list, um, for the Man Booker Prize. So all the Man Booker vloggers, um, or not all, but like most of them talked about this book, read this book, um, so you can go check that out. I guess it's probably a better review than I'll put here, but, um, I actually really love this book. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I didn't really know what to expect. It was kind of like the, not the one book, because I really want to read, um, A Brief History of Seven Killings, and I want to read A Little Life. Uh, but it was like the one book that stood out to me as, like, it just grabbed my attention, and I wanted to read it, and I had this, like, strong desire to pick up this book. Um, so yeah, I ended up doing that, and it follows this woman who has a family tragedy, and it's just like this horrific thing that happens to her, and she actually, her entire family dies, and she's kind of the only one left, and um, it's uh, done so different chapters for different people. Um, one of those but I do like the way he filled in the story and kind of like wove everything together so you get like the backstory and then you get the story of the day and what happened there and it's just kind of um all these different people's perspectives and their like way of going about it and then the story is revealed in that aspect and it follows her um and kind of what her life is like and how she moves on from the situation um so it's just really, I don't know, it's another sad book, but it's really, like, just an interesting character study and character development, and I feel like, um, I don't know, it's just enjoyable in a way to read. <laughs> it's probably bad, because it was really sad, but it was also really good. So yeah, the next book they finished is Fangirl by Rambo Rowell, and I love this book. I don't know, I don't know what else I can say. Like. I'm pretty sure most people know what this book is about. It's about a girl um, who goes away to college. She doesn't really know how to fit in. She has a lot of anxieties and kind of issues with the social world. Um, and she is kind of big in the fanfic world. She's got a lot of followers for this Harry Potter-esque story that she writes fanfic about. And it's just, it was really funny and really witty. And for a book to be good, you don't have to relate to it. But I think it is nice sometimes to be understood in a way and to have that, like, connection with characters in a book. And that's kind of how I felt about Fangirl. I had a big connection to the people in this book. And it was just, like I said, it was a nice read. Like, it wasn't super serious. It wasn't, I feel like I've, I read a lot of serious books in December and this was just kind of like a nice book to read. The last book I read in December was the only book that I actually own on my shelf and this is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon and this is the first book in the series. I have previously read this book 10 years ago back in high school. So I previously read this book and this, it was a fun reread because there was so much that I didn't remember and there was so much like reading comprehension wise that I don't think I even got in this book back in the day. Like I read it when I was in 10th grade so it's not like I was super young but I just hadn't read as much as I have now and to see that and to like actually notice that was huge for me. Like it was kind of mind blowing. But anyways. um. So yeah, this is a story about Claire Randall, who is an English woman and living in the 1940s after the war, and her and her husband go on a 
uh, vacation to Scotland um, and Claire goes through the Standing Stones and back to the 18th, 1800s <laughs> um, and so she just kind of shows up in the 1800s, doesn't know what's going on. Um, people don't trust her because she is English and there is conflict between the Scots and the English at the time and she is kind of taken in by this family. It's great. It's wonderful. There is a, an attractive Scottish man that is in this book and, uh, you know. So anyways, I had previously read this but I hadn't continued on with the series and I really wanted to do that. So I went back and reread this and I'm now reading this second book in the series which is Dragonfly and Amber. And I have seen the first season of the Stars series and I liked it. But I didn't, I don't know, I, I liked it a lot. I just, maybe I'll film like an entirely separate video about that because I just feel like I have a lot to say. I don't know. I feel like I had a lot of opinions <laughs> about that show. But anyways, uh, you should read this book or go watch it. Anyways, um, that's it. That's everything. And uh, I will see you guys next time.